the Splash Brothers are a thing. We love to watch them. They're the best shooting duo in NBA history, the best shooting backcourt in NBA history, and boy when it rains threes, you better watch out. But a lot of people might forget that originally it wasn't Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Back in 2011, the Golden State Warriors were facing an important choice, which player to keep. They went with Steph Curry and the original Splash Brother was traded to Milwaukee Bucks. It's safe to say that this decision worked just fine for the Warriors, but the career of original Splash Brother kinda went on a downward spiral. Hello everyone, I'm Purple Prince and I want to talk about the original Splash Brother for Steph Curry, Monte Ellis. Monte Ellis was the 40th pick of the 2005 NBA Draft, but unlike other late draft picks, he got to play a lot. In his rookie season, Ellis was enjoying a cool 18 minutes per game serving as a backup to team starting shooting guard Jason Richardson. For the next three years, Monte Ellis would be the starting shooting guard for pretty average Warriors teams, peaking in his best season averaging 20.2 points, 5 rebounds and 3.9 assists. And then came probably the best decision in recent Warriors history. With the 7th pick in the first round of the 2009 NBA Draft, the Warriors drafted Steph Curry, a skinny 6'3 point guard, to help out the 6'3 shooting guard in Monte Ellis. At least, that was the plan initially. In their first season together in 2009-2010, Monte Ellis and Steph Curry averaged 25.5 and 17.5 points respectively. Ellis was a volume scorer while Steph was more effective and a better shooter. In their second season together, both were great again. Steph Curry increased his output averaging 18.6 points per game while Monte Ellis still scored more averaging 24.1. Monte Ellis even became a more effective scorer. The beginning of the end for Monte Ellis with the Warriors was the 2011 NBA Draft. Some people were surprised when in 2011 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors took another shooting guard with the 11th pick, Klay Thompson. He was taller, more physical, better defender and actually a better shooter. The Warriors needed to make a choice and to be honest, something in the backward just wasn't working. Even though all the scored points looked good there, there wasn't necessarily a great chemistry between the two guards and Monte sometimes went on those shooting outbursts where he would miss a lot and not really help a team. The Warriors had to trade one of them away and actually offered Steph Curry first and at the time the move didn't look that stupid because Steph was battling with ankle injuries and maybe wasn't yet as electrifying. So when the time came the Bucks wanted Monte Ellis as they were too concerned about Curry's ankle issues well, you can have him then. Monte Ellis was traded to the Milwaukee Bucks for Andrew Bogut. Golden State since has won three championships. Curry and Klay Thompson have developed into superstars. This whole deal kind of worked out for the Warriors. What happened with Monte Ellis you ask? In Milwaukee, Ellis was still doing his thing, averaging around 18 points per game, but doing so ineffectively. In the summer of 2013, Monte Ellis thought he was in for a big payday, but it turned out he could only get a 3 year $25 million deal with the Mavericks, with last year being a player option. In Dallas, nothing changed. Monte Ellis was scoring his 19 points per game, but he was shooting only 45% from the field and around 30% from the 3 point line. The game was changing, shooters started to become more effective and Monte Ellis just didn't. Monte Ellis declined his option to stay with the Mavericks and instead signed a 4 year $44 million deal with the Indiana Pacers. In Indiana, Monte Ellis somehow became even less effective. He was an ineffective starter who shot too many times and didn't make enough shots. In his second year in Indiana, Monte Ellis was still playing 27 minutes per game but averaged only 8.5 points per game, shooting his regular 44% from the field and 31% from the three. In the summer of 2017, 
Monte Ellis was suspended five games for violating NBA's anti-drug policy, and just a couple of weeks later, Ellis was waived by the Pacers with two years left on his contract. He hasn't played since 2016-2017 NBA season, and his most recent attempt of a comeback was before the 2018-2019 season when he worked out for the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves didn't see anything in him they would need for their main team, so as it stands, quite possibly, Monte Ellis will never return to the NBA. As of today, Monte Ellis has played a total of 833 games in NBA, averaging 17.8 points, 4.6 assists and 3.5 rebounds. Seem like quality numbers for a shooting guard until you look at the 45% field goal percentage and 31.4% from the three. Monte Ellis had great highlights. He could light up a house like no other. But the game outgrew him, and he didn't want to evolve with it. Monte Ellis has openly admitted in interviews that the Warriors would have never won a championship with a backcourt of him and Steph Curry. And you know what? I agree. Nevertheless, he was the original Splash Brother for Steph Curry, just not as good as his replacement. Thanks for watching guys. What do you think of Monte Ellis? Will he ever receive another NBA chance? How would you rate his career? Whatever your thought is, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. And also, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel to enjoy more NBA content in the future. This is Purple Prince, and I'm out.